Yeah, it's a pleasure to present uh, Bernardo Monecchi, uh, who is part of Sony Labs uh, CSL, and with whom we had the pleasure to, to discuss and to, um, yeah, to, to actually hear about his uh, work in different fields. And it's a pleasure also to, to listen to your talk about Korean City, which I first uh, saw as a kind of part of exhibit, actually, in Paris. And it was kind of like one of the uh, insights which I got, the first insight, that it's not just theoretical work, right? But yeah, I'm really looking yeah. forward. The floor is yours. <laughs> Thanks so much. OK. Oh, thank you for having me here. Um, Yes, yeah, so as uh, thank you also for the introduction. I, um, as, as, uh, as, uh, as you said, I, I work at Sony CSL, which is a, a, a very special unit within the Sony Corporation. Um, at Sony CSL, we are some kind of more uh, basic research oriented uh, unit, even though we are in a big corporation. What, what, I, what I mean by that, that uh, we are pretty free to explore different directions and to do research in different fields as we like, as, far, as long as these fields are relevant for the corporation or for society in a certain sense. And um, the important part is that uh, we do something impactful in some sense. So, and we do a lot of different things, actually, uh, a lot of different projects that ranges from uh, more R&D things, like uh, a production of music music uh, generated by the AI, for example, which is a very huge topic in the lab, um, to robots in agriculture, to complex system studies, as many <clears throat> as the ones I'm going to show you today. And, uh, and, uh, and and we have very different units. We are opening a new lab right now in, in Rome because we have three labs now worldwide. We have one in Paris that, uh, that, that's quite well known, I guess, in Paris where you are. Um, one in Tokyo, one in Kyoto, and we're trying to open a new one in Rome. Uh, the one in Rome that where I am right now, it's, it's where, I, where I'm now, it's gonna, um, it's gonna work on very specific topics. Uh, basically three one which is general ai another one which is misinformation and social dialogue and the third one uh, where i'm we, which is the one where i'm more involved in it's uh, urban dynamics and urban sustainability so today i'm gonna talk to you about one of the projects we did in the last years concerning uh well urban sustainability actually it's a very particular project, which is, called, which is called Crayon City, that was born from another project that we were doing before, uh, actually at the very beginning of our activities at Sony CSL. Um, so uh, it's going to be quite long, and I hope not to bore you did, uh, that much, but uh, let's start from the very, very beginning. So you can have a little bit of context of what Crayon City is, because it's not uh, just a scientific study. It's a it's a, it's an installation which uh, is meant to be taken to museums and uh, where people are, and, and we expect a lot of people to interact with it. So to have a great public outreach. Okay, so uh, we started with some with which with the project that was called Crayon Project before actually going to, to work with, the, with Sony. Uh, this Korean project was all built around the idea of uh, scientific, uh, of scientific interaction with the public. And uh, we did something that was this, basically, the first year. So we had a lot of Lego, because the Lego Foundation was partner of the project. And to, 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 to basically let people, you know, we were doing a lot of expositions. Uh, in which we had experiments going on and people should have taken part to, the, to that. We also have a lot, had a lot of Legos and we thought, well, why not make people play with Lego while they wait for other things? And so we did that and we asked people to, 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 to tag the, 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 the sculptures they were making collectively and they did uh, quite uh, impressive things just by themselves. We didn't do much. We just put a weight after the, the uh, below the the the, 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 the installation, the, 
the sculptures and we monitor the weight, but just, just for fun. And, and, you, and you see that they did very interesting things. People were, were not willing to go and we, we had to close the, the, the exhibition at some point. It was very, very complex. But, um, and so starting from that, we, we got this idea that, that somehow, uh, if you want to involve people in, in scientific activities, uh, Lego bricks are sort of the best tool you can use because everyone knows it. Everyone wants to play with it. Uh, everyone can have ideas uh, with that. So we, we evolved the, 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 this, this, this very germinal concept from to something which was a little bit more, well, let's say, scientific. And oh, how can I go on from here? OK. No, too much ahead. OK, so and, and, and what we did the, the, the next year that uh, after after the, the, the one that I showed, we do, we did another public exposition with a lot of experiments and we decided that this should have been an experiment too. So we controlled the environment uh, in a room so where we could check who was coming in and coming out, uh, take a little bit of information about them, put, gave them sensors. OK, so that we could map their interactions and we would let them play with the in, in the similar fashion, uh, okay, asking them to build different things. So you can see here on the right uh, some 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 of the things they did. So you know pyram pyramids, something related with Halloween, etc. And we studied a little bit their interactions, and we were able to publish a very nice paper out of it. So this format was somehow good, okay, involving people. So people were happy. You had a lot of um, a lot of, a lot of uh, I would say, advertisement from it. And, uh, and you also were able to get data. So it's, it's like the best possible work. Of course, uh, you lose a little bit of control on the people that take part to the experiment here with you. But, 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 but yet, you, 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 you were able to get some results. Um, so in the very last year of this project, which was exactly when I moved, where I, when I moved to, 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 to the ISA Foundation, where I was working on this crayon project to Paris, to Sony CSL, uh, we decided to, to, to do something slightly different. Uh, because we were thinking that uh, with bricks, the, 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 the simplest things you can, you can make was a, was, was a city. So, and, uh, and, and also we, we realized that making people just create what they wanted was interesting, but uh, asking them to solve problems was even more interesting and, uh, and probably even more fun for, for, for them. So we did the very first install, installment on, of what we call the Crayon City, okay, in 2017. Oh, <laughs> okay, so basically, um, it was the same format. People should should have come to a to a control room and play with a with a giant city. We monitored the thing with a with Kinex, so we measured the volumes of the different bricks of different colors, and we we realized a small game in the back end of the installation, so that they have to balance the city in a with rules that we completely made up at the beginning. Okay. But anyway, it was nice. We had a huge amount of people again, a huge, a huge lot of people wanted to play. Uh, so you see here the time lapse. It's uh, it, was, it was a very stressful day actually, but 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 still uh, quite. Uh, we had a lot of satisfaction out of it. Okay. So when we arrived to to Sony CSL and uh, we had to start to build new research lines uh, in the lab for, for the new team I was taking part to, uh, we thought that uh, urban environments were probably one of the most interesting topics which we should have worked on because of course we have data out of it. There are a lot of challenges nowadays. They are so important uh, in, the, in modern nations. It's like because they, they are the center of innovation, um, but they also uh, they, they are they are big, they, 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 the population living in cities is growing. All the all these things that everyone knows. Um, of course, they have they have problems, and all the problems are well known to interact in a complex way. So uh, you <clears throat> you have social segregation, which is related to the fact that uh, people are more so. And everything is not linear because, for example, you have scaling with population which are non-linear, non-trivial, etc. 
And um, so basically, uh, the idea that we were uh, that we extrapolated from all the previous experiences was, but if we get all some of these aspects and we model them somehow and make people interact with the model, okay, can do they understand something about it? I mean, okay, can they improve their knowledge of of uh, of the model they're playing with? Uh, if we do then play with it somehow. Uh, and, uh, and so, well, we, we took the Crayon City format and we changed it. We changed it in a, in a smaller experiment at the beginning, uh, which, which is, I mean, it's a, it, it could be less exciting if you, if, if you think about the skills that you had before, but I assure you that the format that we presented here is quite aesthetically pleasant. Um, basically, uh, as before, they had they had to build a city, but a small one, a small one over which they had full control. Okay, um, so basically, here in this picture, you see that the 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 the, 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 the single player let's let, let's call it like that was made of these parts here: one, two, three, four, five. In in uh, in one, you you had different places with different Lego bricks of different colors. And uh, on, on top of each hole, you, for, for bricks, you had the explanation of what the color meant. For example, um, for example, orange bricks represented homes. So if you put more orange bricks on the board, you, 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 you make small orange buildings, you, you will see the population of the city increase. If you put green, green, of course, that's green areas, you will see more parks in the city. Okay. Basically, so from one, you take the bricks, uh, you put them on the building board in two, okay? Then there is uh, a, a depth sensor plus RGB camera that records the volume of the different bricks of the different colors. Uh, when, when you have built what you want we want to build, you press the button here in five, and you see the result of your actions in four, okay? It's pretty straightforward. There, there is an interface that tells you everything you have to do. Uh, so you, it doesn't require much, uh, much support from the staff uh, of museums or, or any venues in which you bring it, okay. which was very important, of course, because, because we wanted it to, to stay in museums for quite a long time or, or expositions for quite a long time. We couldn't stay there for months. Um, okay, I already explained it, how it works. Um, so basically, when we built the installation, we, we got in touch with this uh, exhibition, which was called AI More Than Human, a very nice exhibition that started in, in the UK in 2018 or 2019, I don't remember anymore. Um, so basically, um, what, what we collaborating with them, we, we developed the installation that you saw before. So they helped us with the design of the physical part of the installation. Uh, we provided all the parts of the back end, the, the computers, the, 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 the Wi-Fi for the internet connection, everything. And uh, the, the, we designed a way to maintain it, if, if, even though we weren't there. And from with AI more than human, basically the installation moved into very different museums. So it started to the bar, to the, with the Barbican Center in London, which was, which was a very impressive venue, and it stayed there for quite a long time. Um, and basically, uh, I will show you some results coming with data we collected there. It's, it's not by chance that the data was collected there because afterwards, well, COVID happened. So we moved the installation from the Barbican Center to Groningen Forum in 2020. And we couldn't get much data out of it, of course, because people were not, very, uh, not really allowed to play with the installation, even though we, I mean, if they were allowed to go to the museums at all. Then it moved again to World Liverpool Museums in 2021. We had almost the same problem there. Now it's in, in China, in the Guangdong Science Center. Um, and there, uh, as you may imagine, <laughs> we, we really don't know what's going on. Okay. But the next venue should be in Madrid next year. So we hope that there the things are going to be easier and we can start collecting data again. Okay. Um, and not just those venues, of course, because we uh, we also we had the backbone of the installation, so we could reproduce it in other places. Uh, so, for example, we went to the Rome Maker Fair in 2019, and uh, uh, we were awarded as a, with a Maker of Merit, uh, 
that year, which was we, we were quite surprised because it's not really something that you should bring to to a maker fair, I think. But um, we were very happy about it. Then <clears throat> uh, to the visible visible sensible exhibition in 2020 at uh, Romainville. Um, it was very nice there, or even though still in the pandemic. So that's. Uh, and, uh, but, but the venue was very nice, a very nice art center, right, just right outside Paris. And recently at the mid center in Milan, uh, it's still very, very small one, but very nice area. You see that they, they built us this room with, uh, with these nice posters. And uh, so, so again, we're very, very, very happy with the result. So uh, com coming a little bit to the, to the scientific part. <laughs> um, how does it work exactly? So what do you have to expect when you get there? So this is what you see typically if you go to the Barbican Center, for example. Okay, you see something like this. Uh, so you have two places where you have to play and you have to choose one. You choose one place, okay, let's say the, the left one. And then you have a welcome screen that tells you, welcome to Crane City, push buttons, reset, etc. Okay, and you see, the, and, and you already see here that you have, uh, on the on the left side, uh, several bars matching the colors that you that you have with Lagos, and on the right side you have some outputs of the configuration of the city that you have there. So you know that with this amount of population, with this amount of jobs in the private sector, uh, this amount of gray areas, you have an employment of 84 percent. Okay, <clears throat> or this level of inequality here, the Gini coefficient. Okay. And this is explained to you by the interface. Plus, in the bottom, you go, you go on. That's the only way you have to. You, you can interact with the interface. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. So you can just push the button, okay. And uh, if you go after a, little, a small tutorial, similar to the one that I just I just made you, you are given a you are given a mission, a mission. So. Uh, one of the output indicators on the right are chosen randomly, not exactly randomly, but uh, among the bad ones. Okay, so you have too many private vehicles, oh, sorry, per capita in your city, 62%. Uh, try to reduce it at least to a level, which, which sometimes it's, uh, it's unreasonable, but that doesn't matter. You need to, to get as close as possible to that point. Okay. And what you can do actually is to ch you can change the city. So you can you can basically remove buildings, make new buildings, do whatever you want. And every time you do that, you press the button, and the output is recomputed. And the, the interface tells you if you are getting better or not. You have five attempts. After the five attempts, uh, it tells you if you succeed you succeeded or not. Okay. In this case, I did not succeed. I did I do not lose or win anything. Okay. You see here, it was a very trivial move. I removed all the, the 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 yellow and blue buildings. Okay, so I destroyed the public sector and the commerce, and it isn't then that that didn't affect at all the amount of private vehicles, not that much at least. Um, and uh, and you see here, there is a timer with the, with some time that we have to put there for. Uh, because people in the museums, they, they told us they don't want people to stay there for long. So to push people away, if the timer is not, uh, the time is not, is not over, you're, you're given another mission. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you, you're asked to leave. That, that's the best we can do. Okay. Um, you don't realize it while playing, yes, but what's happening in the background? So what we did is taken Italianista data from the uh, National Statistics Bureau, because we were familiar with it, okay? and we built a generative model out of it. Okay, uh, there there is another paper about the model, but uh, for for the moment, just 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 imagine that uh, um, it's a generative model, which means that uh, it it models the, dis the 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 joint distribution of all the variables that you see on the screen, either the inputs or the the outputs. But of course, you can use the the conditional probability of some in, of some variables that you consider as an input, uh, the, the output condition on that to have a result, which is the, the, the most likely value of the output given, given the input. Okay. So what happens is that you, the, the, the sensor records the amount of bricks of different colors, which are mapped on, 
on a point of this space x input, then, then that gives you the output. So you have, you're playing with these models here, with this model here, uh, of which we know all the parameters. So we know what they're for. And, uh, and, and so from there, we, we can try to study what you learned about the, about the models now, okay? Uh, at least a little bit. Um, okay, we, we observed that uh, we had quite a stable flux of people in time. So people are going there playing all the time, um, le le less people in the evening. Okay, people are playing one to three missions, which is which is reasonable in the amount of time we gave them. But of course, the, the the fact that you are in a museum and people just want to pass by and see other things made a lot of people play just one match, which is a bit unfortunate because we want to study iteration, so the, the learning process behind the, 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 behind your games. Okay, but yet uh, they, they were enough to 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 make a little bit of statistics. So um, we see we saw that the player was able to solve the match in uh, basically one 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 case out of of four, which was which was good, and uh, we wanted to a little bit to, to understand and what bring people, people to, to win. win. And, and uh, we, we had several several hypotheses. Oh, <laughs> I can hear my voice in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, several I, hypotheses. One, one of one of which was in the room, I think. <laughs> but okay, okay. No, there was a, an hypothesis was well, well, they 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 can't solve the mission because the 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 the, the sweet spot in which you have to go in the configuration space is too small. Okay, so we tried to measure that as well, which was pretty straightforward. We called this measure complexity, and we saw that it was highly uh, uh, correlated with the. Probability of not winning. So if the, if the space in which you could win was too small, you couldn't win. Okay, but then of course we had the model. Okay, and and we know the we knew the the the, the meaning of all the parameters of the model. So we could we were able to to derive a measure of nonlinearity. So you see this, um, this this is an Hamiltonian here for those of you who are familiar with physics, and um, basically in the, the Hamiltonian above. If we include this term here with three with three indices, okay, I'm modeling um, nonlinear interactions between between variables, which means that the, the average of some variables must could be linked with the with the other ones in a nonlinear way. If I remove these, okay, and I have to remove the also the other one with the H term for, for other reasons, I get a linear model, which is here basically Gaussian model, okay. And with the with the difference between the two models, I, I am able to to quantify how much nonlinear was the response of the model to the move of the player. Okay, and so we were able to see if this impacts, and we saw that in fact it impacted. Um, we saw that pro the, the the it was easier for you if you had to start in a very high nonlinear area in which everything you do is nonlinear, and then for some reason the the solution of your mission is in a linear one. That that's the what, what really boosted your probability of winning. So, so, sorry, can I, can I ask a question here? Yeah. About the model, if you can go back, just to make sure I understand. Yeah, no problem. So, so what, what is the yeah, yeah. space? So, so the variables, uh, what do they correspond to? And what is the state? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The window of time, the state? Or? No, 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 it's, uh, it's everything you see in the monitor. I so see, okay, see... okay, okay. Okay. Um, okay, so where was I? Okay. Um, okay, another thing, of course, a more trivial thing that we could study is how much time you, it took you for, to, to, to solve the mission and how much time it, it, it took you to, to make a move, to, to change something, okay? And we saw that basically that there is a sweet spot in which it's very high likely that you won if your match was short and you did very few moves uh, in which you took your time. So. Long moves, but few moves uh, in which you talked about what you were doing. Okay. And last but not least, we uh, we wanted to, this is something that we had uh, to solve to to solve uh, in um, in a creative way since COVID is, that did not allow us to, to to proceed with the work because at some point we realized that uh, the model that we have might uh, have some interactions between between variables which are not exactly what you would expect 
so in some cases in some missions that we propose you would have to do something which goes sort of against your intuition um, <clears throat> of course to study that the best scenario would have been to ask the people so to make service directly within the museum but uh, in the in the first uh, in the first uh, um, the first version in Barbican Center, we didn't do that because first we wanted to be sure that people were in, was in, were interested in the installation and they wanted to play. And then we planned to do that in the in the other venues, but we couldn't. So we decided to 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 make service uh, not directly on the participants, but on a population that was sort of representative of the participants, sort of because we were not sure about that, of course. So we did. Um, we did two surveys, uh, one of, on Survey Monkey, asking for a population which was representative of the UK population, uh, assuming that the UK population somehow was the one that went to the Barbican Center, which is not certain. And then we just asked to, to eight complex system science, scientists to, 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 to see if the answers differed uh, much between the two groups. So we asked things like, uh, do you think that, for example, increasing the population of the city would decrease the number of private cars? Okay, so more people, more cars, right? Or uh, do you think that increasing the green areas of the city would decrease the number of private cars? I mean, I don't even see a, see a link there, okay? Uh, and, and then you, you're, you're asked to respond to that. And so with all the answers, we were able to, to basically um, define which what, what, what we call paradox moves. So in the game, sometimes it happens uh, that you have to do something which is against the general consensus that either the, 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 the specialists or the general people said uh, you should have done in that situation. Okay, doesn't happen very often, but it happens. Okay, <clears throat> and. Um, and yeah, I, I, we saw that the people that that when when people did something like that, so so they were able to to to, to understand. We don't know to be able to do uh, uh, something against the the, the general uh, or at least the, the, the general idea behind uh, behind the solution of a problem, and they were able to go in the opposite direction, which was the the, the correct one that led to uh, an increase on the chances of winning. Okay. Uh, we couldn't ask directly to the people if they if they if they grasp this out of the problem. That would have been great to 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 to, to ask people about, about their games afterwards, but we could not. So what we did to 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 strengthen a little bit the hypothesis that they were able to, to have an insight of it was to to to, to compare it with the baseline model that was doing random things. So we had the network of moves of people, okay, and uh, and uh, and so instead of deciding. Uh, uh, what to do exactly with, with the same part of the player we, we, we make it move randomly to see if they still if something random was able to do the same moves of the people in the same in the same situation with the same uh, chances of winning and uh, and the same frequency of course not which was assuring that probably and uh, probably people were able to, to to grasp a little bit about this this behavior of the model okay as i said before people iterated the, the game a little bit not many of them just 18 percent um and so it would have been uh, we asked that uh, typically when you play the game more you, you get better right and uh, what do you learn about it okay can, can can we say something with this kind of of approach um and so what we saw is that basically the, the, the probability of, of success increased with the, with, the, with, the, with the iterations. You see it here in, in the top of picture, okay? You have an increase of, of success of 10% if you play at least two times, okay? Which is, which is nice. And um, what we did to understand if people understood something or at least to have an idea if they could under, have understood something was to make um a classifier so in each iteration and for all the games together we de we develop a classifier which based on all the aspects that i showed you before okay we was able to discriminate uh if a if match was one or not right okay so the how much complex was the match did did, uh, did um, the player make a paradox move or not uh, how was the no, how high was the nonlinearity at the beginning? Uh, how did it vary? How <clears throat> what about the match the match duration and the, the average move time, etc. Okay, 
and we found that these metrics are very relevant to, to, to discriminate between, uh, within matches. So we, we have a good accuracy in determining if a match was won or not. The interesting part is that we iterate the, the classifier on match numbers. So we classify only the matches plays one time. Uh, the second matches of all players, the third matches of all players. We see that the um, accuracy of the classifier are still uh, are always good. So I can always distinguish between uh, matches that are won or not, but some metrics become become less relevant. So, and you can see it here. These are the odds of a logistic regression classifier, and you see that nonlinearity becomes immediately not uh, not relevant after the second iteration. Um, okay, well, <clears throat> this is not that surprising. Uh, if you, if you, but but, it, but it's it's nice to see that people understood it, because actually in the model that I showed before, the nonlinearity part is that just it's just a small correction to to the linear part. So it's pretty easy to overcome and to and to predict how it works because it will not completely, um, let's say, it will not completely change the behavior of the model. So uh, if, you, if you expect something to increase, increasing a certain variable, that will still increase. It just will increase more than what you think, okay? But, not that, but it, it won't change the behavior completely. And, and this is something that people understood. Um, well, uh, <clears throat> that, that's it for, for, for the, let's say, the scientific part of the, the talk. It's, uh, it was a very long ride to get to, to this point with this project, and it was very... <laughs> A very intense activity, as you may imagine, because it's not just analyzing the data; it's also, you know, uh, taking part to expositions, uh, interact with, 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 with the staff of museums, uh, think, understanding what, what, what's their interest in all the things that you do, etc. And uh, we had a lot of ideas to to keep on the project, and uh, unfortunately, I think we are not we will not able be able to do that, but. Uh, um, who knows in the future, you know, Korean <clears throat> um, City is quite versatile, versatile in this sense. So I showed you the, the, the single player version, but as, is, as I told you, it could be made collective, uh, merging the, the, the first part of the project that I showed you just with uh, free building of all the sculptures to, to understand something about collective decision making. And of course, it could be improved by by controlling the sample of people that plays your game which we did not for the moment just to see if we could see something and but uh yeah let's let's hope in the future we we, we are able to carry it on somehow and uh, well i guess th th that's it for the moment if you have any questions i will be happy to 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 to, to answer if you have any comments or critiques i mean everything's welcome okay <laughs>